Peggy, you haven't done the lunch rush with us. This is uh, fun. We just kind of kick around some other things that we haven't hit on yet. Mr. Abdallah. Hello. Hello. It's not It's uh, It's uh. not shot or no shot. It's not Aki's A-list. It's not Muslim musings. Mm-mm. Okay. It's uh, the lunch rush. It's not would you rather. Got it. It's not would you rather. Although sometimes I just steal the phrasing yeah, from them. Which I like, Like actually. I did yesterday. I do um, like that. So let's see. Where do you want to start? NBA or NFL? Uh, well, you pick. The, you're, All right. You're, NFL. It's the world. Caleb. Caleb, horses, horses, horses. Yeah, horses. I want to bet on the total that, like I said, I don't want PETA coming after me. I got enough PETA bread in my life. Um, but, like, I should be able to bet on the total of... That's terrible, Adam. <laughs> well, stop killing horses. Well, huh? I mean, oh, I, oh, yeah. I, 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 I agree with that. Stop killing I mean, horses. Terrible. Hmm? Terrible. I can bet on whether a dude's going to get punched in the face and knocked out. That's true. Can't bet on this. No, because that, that's, that's uh, morbid. So is a dude getting punched in the face and what's not to some I, uh, people? It's barbaric. Yeah, that might be barbaric, but new unnamed anime podcast coming out later today for UFC 301 this weekend in, in Brazil. In Brazil, excellent. Uh, guys, celebrities—they're just like us. Mm-hmm. Caleb Williams was spotted at Target today. Get out. And he, well, he put it on Instagram that he was a target today. Oh, now he's Brett's a humble brat. And, uh, you know, celebrities, they're just, you know, everybody's got to buy toilet paper. That's I love Carmen's response. Get, Get out. Get out. He, he was at Target? He was at tar- Target in L.A.? Uh, it, I don't know, because it was sunny, and it's sunny now. And he posted earlier in the week that it was the last few nights in, he was at his L.A. Right. condo, right. apartment, whatever, and said it was the last few nights there. So he might be here getting ready for mini camp, the rookie mini camp to start this week. Why would he buy toilet paper in LA if he's not going to be there much longer? Maybe he's setting it up as an Airbnb. Right. Who knows? Maybe maybe setting up for like friends or family to stay or an Airbnb or He's not doing an Airbnb. No, probably not. Okay, I'm looking Secondary at the income. trees. The trees in the parking lot. I'm going to go to his Instagram. Do not look lot. like you're in Southern California. This is on his Instagram, you yeah, said Adam? Yeah, the trees yeah. in the parking Caleb. lot look like spring in the Midwest. And he put, like, look at the parking lot. Look at the trees. Is this this in his story? Yeah, his story. Okay, hold on. Uh, The trees in the background look like he's in the Midwest. Perhaps maybe Vernon Hills. I gotta, I gotta have to kind of agree with Chris on this. Yeah. Look at the trees. That's not Southern California. It's not. And I someone in the Twitch chat is saying that it's overcast in Southern California right now. Maybe they're listening to us in Southern California. All right. Um, and I, Shane Norling also in the Twitch chat saying maybe he's buying a live, laugh, love sign. I would love it if he was like a word sign guy. You know what? Plus, plus, I think the way he's dressed, it looks like he was out maybe when it was a little breezy and cooler. To, you know? Like, okay. All right. I'll, I'll tell stuff. you what. I'll tell you that he's walking out of the store. I know, I know where this is. He's at Vernon Hills. He's in Vernon Hills. Look, look at the background. I want to see. How come I can't? I'm looking at his Instagram. Why? It's, a it's a story. It's a story. You got to look at the story. Yeah, and then just take a screenshot of it. That's what oh, I did. Oh, I look- see it. Wait, screenshot? Oh, he's Here's got, the deal. He's Here. got sweatshirts on. I think Chris is right. It's Vernon Hills. I think so. Wait, you know what? Let's I'm... blow up the license plates on the uh, cars. I was trying to do that, but uh, I can't I don't get know a good if read you can on see it. that. I-, I can't get a good read. But look at the trees. That's yeah, spring. Yeah, I think Chris is right. What kind of sweatpants are those, you guys? You guys are known most things. Uh, I gotta look. Young hip people know. Like, is that a fancy They're gray. brand? The gray. <laughs> gray. No, no. Do you see the logo? It's. It, I can't tell what that is. That's look, an look Illinois, left Illinois leg. license plate. They got. It's got the blue trim. Yeah, he's here. I just was wondering. Uh, looks like he's wearing Adidas sandals. Am I right or no? No, what it's it? aloe. Aloe. I'm sorry. And then what's that? Uh, what's that pant, Chris? Can you tell? I can't tell what it is. I do not know. It's something Hold fancy, on, more expensive than it. what I'm I'll wearing, I'll tell you that it. much. I can't tell either. It looks a little uh, worn, too. Something yeah. cool that we don't even know about, you guys. Well, he's got the Nike, uh, It's probably that's probably a Nike Bears uh, hoodie that he's wearing. Probably is. It's blue. What do you think, Caleb goes right, to Costco? I, I was just going to say, you think he's wearing, he wears his Bears gear? Yeah, maybe not. Well, oh, there's the no thing. doubt that that yeah, sweatshirt, that's a bear sweatshirt. That's a bear sweatshirt. Because it's get... navy blue. Why not? He gets it all for free. Yeah, but he would He would be... You know how much free stuff I get from Waddle's, here that I wear all the time? Waddle's always when wearing When you're just out in public, do you do you really want... He's not wearing his jersey. Right. He's wearing a, he's wearing a bear sweatshirt. I think it's a bear sweatshirt. There's no way he's wearing a Nike sweatshirt that's not a bear sweatshirt. Yeah, the boys could be right. Do you think he shops? Does he go to Costco, too? Is he making a Costco run? I'm I mean, surprised he just doesn't have Instacart. Caleb is just like us. Like just he likes well, to do my, it himself. My favorite part of this is everybody saying celebrities are just like us. He clearly didn't take the picture. Like, someone is with him taking this picture. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> like, he's you're got, right. I don't know who's with him, but someone is with him taking the picture.
His hey, girlfriend. Maybe. Listen, we all need soap and toilet paper, like Adam said. Yeah, so. everybody. Everybody's got to, you know, bathe and uh, wipe. There you go. All I right. love it. Caleb settling in, one. settling into Chicago. Uh, if you have any, uh, if you don't have a ticket yet on the Bills to go under whatever win total they have, bet it now because mm. Chase Claypool has just signed with the Bills. Ah. <laughs> so bet the unders. Good job. I actually think I, think I think under Bills bet might be a good one this year. <laughs> I love that. What else, Adam? Uh, CBS did the, and I, I'm bringing this up because uh, I was listening to Peggy and Dion as the pick was made. CBS did their questionable picks, questionable picks from every team in the draft, and guess who was the questionable pick by the Bears? Well, that's easy because he was. I mean, they only hint. had five picks, and they took a, one of them was a punter. So it says more often than not, it seems the drafted specialists do not pan out outside of the elite. Those have been volatile positions in the NFL. Chicago had only had five picks, so there, well, they really only had four at the time. So there was not a lot from which to choose, but Taylor was the only contender. Everything else the Bears did was stellar. Amen. I remember I was listening, we were driving back from uh, golf on Saturday last week, listening to Peggy and Dion, and I, I remember it's a you great guys program we were listening like, to on our way back. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, they were like we were listening to draft like coverage. A punter. All right. <laughs> we did. We were like, All right. yeah, of course. Like we literally thought that. Of course. We're like, what? Because you're what? sane. Right. Uh, yes, of course. Oh, now the lines are ringing. What happened? I don't know. I think oh, so. People saw him no, at Target. Here's the thing. People are Somebody rushing see to him Target. At Target. I think that Vernon Hills earlier Target. this earlier the past couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's the horse. Because the past couple weeks, oh. Cap and Hood have been doing a thing where they're giving something away every time you hear the damn gallop. So, and so <laughs> I knew this would happen eventually. He's been playing this. I think people think they're winning something. Oh, no, we're celebrating horse racing. What a great day. You every oh. weekend. For the call to post, the call to post in about 10 minutes, That's and awesome. then you'll get your final Woodford Reserve qualifier. That is awesome. It's either and somebody now they're get, we, now they're all hanging See, up. It's yeah. either we got something wrong You're or right. somebody thinks we're giving something away. That's awesome. I love that. Brilliant. Uh, our next story, you guys have it. I don't think we've touched on it yet, the Patrick Beverly story. No, we haven't. Should we do God. that now? Yeah, play. So the audio from yesterday, there's two parts of this. During the, towards the end of the game, there was an altercation with a fan. Apparently, when they were breaking the huddle, the as they were breaking the huddle, the fan yelled Cancun on three. <laughs> <laughs> That's and pretty so funny. Pat Bev took issue with the fan saying Cancun on three, asked for the ball, and then threw it that, at the fan. That's funny. Cancun um, on three. He apologized on Twitter to the fan, and then afterward, after the game, there was this exchange with a with a uh, ESPN producer. Yeah, it was this was a group of reporters at his locker interviewing him, yes. and there was an ESPN producer there with an ESPN mic flag. Take a listen. You subscribe to my pod? Do I subscribe? To, I do not. Subscribe. So I'm, I, you can't interview me then. Okay, no disrespect. Jamal is here. You, you, so. you subscribe? Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, again, there were a couple times within a bucket or two. Um, in previous games, y'all have been able to kind of get over that hump or maybe. You move that mic, please, or just get out the circle, please, for me, please, ma'am. If you're not subscribed to my pod, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. The NBA better stop the insanity now. If you have to be subscribed to a player's ridiculously lame podcast to interview them after a game, well, Come on. The, the Professional Basketball Writers Association did release a uh, statement, which I, I just had here. So Melinda Adams is the producer in question there. Um, she tweeted that I want to thank everyone for their kind words and support. Patrick Beverly called me and apologized. I appreciate it and I accept it. The Bucks also reached out to apologize. I've been in news for over 40 years and kindness and grace always win. So she has accepted his apology. He apologized afterwards. Still doesn't Take it's away really from stupid. the crappy thing that he did. What an it, idiot. It, it, nonsense. I mean, honestly, it, between knucklehead between throwing nonsense. the ball at a fan just, and then... I, and, and what people don't realize is she hadn't even asked him a question yet. She was one of many reporters uh, that did were... Did they all follow they his were, podcast? They were circling him. Yeah, right. Did he ask if everybody followed his podcast? We, am I to understand that... As the season has gone on, only people who follow or subscribe his podcast can interview him and ask questions? Well, that's can interesting. This... No, because he works for the N an NBA team. Oh, and he also works for ESPN. I mean, complete and total silliness. It, it's, uh, it I, is. I, 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 don't, I mean, I don't it, know what to say. Well, I think it's great that the uh, Basketball Writers Association released something saying that they don't condone it, that it was ridiculous for him to single out someone. Um, 
you don't get to pick and choose who does the interviews in post games like that based on someone subscribing to something you do in your own time, free time, personal Thank time. You. You're actually at work, yeah. and that's part of your work contract. So, Pat Bev, come Un- on. Unbelievable. Really I, I was reading last night that he's done this throughout the season. He has? But it, it wasn't captured on camera the way it was last night. That Nobody is. I Joe Kelly did Joe situations Kelly said he's something, done this. too. I, I'm yeah. sh- I mean, like, at no point this has come up. How is that not... How have we not known that? How has the league not stepped in and said something? I mean, the, it, it's complete lunacy. Uh, there's there's just no other way to put it. He'll be suspended for the start of next season. If he wants to play, continue playing, he'll be suspended to start the season, right? It might be time to hang it up. Yeah, he should absolutely well, especially be. For the, he threw the, a ball twice yeah, at a fan, right. and then he did that nonsense. He should probably call it a career. Well, so I'm wondering if he... Go, go podcast, He dude. had that in the back of his mind that Maybe. it doesn't matter, so Maybe. he's just going to act like that. Go on pod, his way go, out. Go podcast. Go. Go. <laughs> Nobody will miss you. It kills I, me. I, 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 I guaranteed. The, this whole this whole sense of privilege because if he doesn't want to talk to someone, he doesn't have to. You know, it, it's it is so silly. Yeah, it, it really is, and it's not for people who are saying, you know, he, he they lost a game. He was in a bad mood. He was like, well, he wasn't in a bad mood to the other twenty guys in the scrum. He was, he was answering their questions. He singled out a woman you know, the, the, who hadn't even asked a question the, yet. The, the, the nonsense, too, of like, oh, it was after a loss and he was in a bad mood. You can't win anymore. LeBron gets his balls busted relentlessly because he's not in a bad enough mood now after losses. That's the new thing on the Internet is look at the way Michael talked and look at the way LeBron, uh, Kobe talked after loss, and then they compare it to LeBron. Like, does anyone really think LeBron doesn't care about winning? Can you be so naive to think that LeBron James, who's played nearly 70,000 minutes in the NBA, doesn't care about winning? Can you really think that? Listen, I... Like, are are you kidding? Carm, we've been in enough locker rooms. We see when players don't have to like the reporters they don't have to like the media and i've seen it i've seen it from olin Krutz when oh god he would not answer a question from certain reporters he just I, would I, look at them not say anything and look to the next reporter for the next question so he could have handled it better but oh yeah olin was but going back pat beverly wasn't doing it because she did something against him or she wrote something against him she's a producer there was another espn reporter in the same scrum so it, it, it's just it was really it was poorly targeted yeah bad, bad look. look real bad look uh, i know they were very beat up but bad look for the bucks i mean the, the doc thing kind of blew up in their face i love doc rivers personally but man i mean how many teams are going to keep taking swings here uh, when you think of the recent history uh, he made a lot of excuses in the second half of the season i don't know uh, and i know dame and, and Giannis being hurt changes things but two years in a row out in the first round Giannis hurt in each of the last two years uh, in the postseason not good in milwaukee all right that's the